Welcome to Mathematics with Tom. I am Tom, and my headphones on. Today we are going to find the Laplace transforms of e to the a t cosine omega t and e to the a t sine omega t. Now uh, let's just do a quick review. Remember that if I wanted to find the Laplace transform of e a t cosine omega t, then what I would do is we can evaluate the integral from 0 to infinity, e to the minus st times this, our function, e to the a t cosine omega t dt. My initial reaction to that is one of great concern. It looks like there's integration by parts. Usually when there's integration by parts, parts can not work so well. So I think what I'm going to do is I was looking at this and notice that if I was to write something like this, e to the a t times e to the i omega t. Well notice also that's the same, we can add those, but we can also expand that and if I expand that, that's e to the a t times cosine omega t plus i sine of omega t. We're just applying Euler's identity and if I distribute this, notice what I get. I get e to the a t cosine omega t plus i e to the a t sine of omega t. And if I call all of this, let's say I gave it a name like um, like we'll just call it i for some integral that we're going to have to work with or some number. Actually, maybe let's just call it uh, z for some complex function. Well, notice this. Notice that the real part, the real part of z, this is e to the a t cosine of omega t. And the imaginary, the imaginary part of z, that is e to the a t sine omega t. So it seems to me that another route that might be much easier to take would be to do this, would be to find the Laplace transform of e to the a, um, I'll write that, yeah, a t e i omega t. Let's try that then. So this becomes the integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus s t times e, and I'm gonna write those together to the a t plus i omega t dt. All right, well let's, let's combine our exponents where we can just add those up. So I have the integral from zero to infinity e to the minus, I'm going to factor out a minus, so I have an s minus a minus i omega parentheses times t. So I factored a, a negative out on the left, and I factored the t out on the right, dt. Now we can evaluate, the, or now we can take the integral. So this becomes uh, minus 1 over all of this, s minus a minus i omega evaluated from 0 to, oops, <laughs> um, e to the minus s minus a minus i omega t evaluated from 0 to infinity. Now, e to the minus s minus a minus i omega t, let's just, just to provide um, solid footing for our argument. Let's write this as negative 1 over s minus a minus i omega uh, e. I'm going to bring all, separate all those e's. e to the a t, e to the minus s t, e to the i omega t from 0 to infinity. And notice, actually, let's, let's write it this way. Let's write it as e 
to the minus s minus a t. So when this goes to infinity, we know that this first term here becomes 0. So that's just be, we've already said that that has to be true. Otherwise, there's no Laplace transform. So we have a 0. And then when we evaluate this at 0, we're going to pick up a minus. Well, all of these exponential terms become 1s. So we have minus minus 1 over uh, s minus a minus i omega. And let's take this one step further. Let's, um, let's write this as plus. So, so we just have a 1. But notice this. Notice that we have, we have a complex number here, especially if we think of it this way s minus a, that's our real part, minus i omega, that's our imaginary part. Well, we can't find the real and the imaginary part of this whole function until, until we rationalize it or divide it. So let's multiply by the complex conjugate. s minus a plus i omega over s minus a plus i omega, and this is equal to s minus a plus i omega over, and we know that when we have a complex conjugate, we multiply them, we get s minus a squared plus omega squared. And there it is. So look at this. Make sure this is easier to see. If we break this up, these are fractions. One of our fractions is s minus a over s minus a squared plus omega squared plus our imaginary component is i times omega over s minus a squared plus omega squared. And there, just be, we're just using the fact that we have a common denominator. So now we can say that the Laplace transform of e to the a t cosine of omega t, well that's equal to the real part of the Laplace transform of e to the a t e i omega t. Well that's just s minus a over s minus a squared plus omega squared. And our last piece is this one, and that's the, the Laplace transform of e to the a t sine omega t. Well, that's the imaginary part. That's the imaginary part of the Laplace transform of e to the a t e to the i omega t. So that is simply omega over s minus a squared plus omega squared. And that's how we find the Laplace transforms of e to the a t cosine omega t and e to the a t sine omega t. I hope that helps, and thanks for watching.